what is his future like, Nathan? What's Nathan's future like in, in I'm sorry, Ian, Nathan's future in terms of what, what next? I mean, is he waiting for the other shoe to drop? And if so, you got any tricks up your sleeve? Um, I, I hope we're not waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm looking at this as a as a tremendous um, opportunity here to um, to to not have that happen. Um, but um, but certainly, ultimately, most patients with CLL, um, the disease comes back, right? And even on the, these these exciting new drugs and exciting new new therapies, and. Um, and but there's still there's still opportunities here, right? I mean, I think he was on venetoclax for a short period of time. It might be that um, that gets re um, repurposed and back in a therapy. We're now developing next generation BTK inhibitors that overcome the resistance. You know, if someone becomes resistance to a brutinib to a calibrutinib. There are common mutations that occur, and there's now next generation molecules, drugs that um, that get around that that um, side effect. So. We're trying to stay one step ahead all, all the time, uh, and, and, and there, there clearly are other options. Yeah, and same thing happening in acute leukemia where we have these targeted therapies and then the disease learns how to be resistant to it and we're learning how to target that. So there is a lot of reason for, for hope, but there's not gonna be one cure for no. every, every person. Um, so Nathan, how is it living with that knowledge that you're on therapy and it might come back and how, how do you deal with that? For me, uh, in my personality, I, I look at it more as right now I'm MRD negative. They're, if I went to some doctor and told me to give a full checkup, they could look at all, you know, and they wouldn't find any, any trace of cancer in me, uh, at least not CLL. So uh, I, I see that even if it does come back, it's not like it comes back and all right, you need treatment tomorrow. So it could come back and 15 years and I, uh, it might slowly progress at that point. I have another 10 years and I'm, who, who knows what will be out there in you know, that amount of time. The, the new treatment options that are coming down right now um, are pretty amazing and hopefully the kinks will be worked out of them by if down the road I need it. So has this affected your interest in other health maintenance? Is it more or less? Uh, I think like most people that are diagnosed with cancer, you get that spun up like, all right, you know, I'm going vegan and I'm gonna work out every day. Uh, and then life happens and you, especially with, with this, once I was, had treatment, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't, I'm back to my normal life prior to being diagnosed for the most part. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lisa, do you think so? Life is normal. We have a, we have our new normal. I would say it's pretty close to what it was before. Um, for me, um, my personality is I'm I'm a pessimist. I'll be honest. Um, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. As as ready as I was for him to get treatment, there was a part of me that it was the opposite. Like, okay, but once he's in remission, once he's MRD negative, then we're on a timeline, and we don't know what that timeline is. And I'm a planner. I do very well with routine. So um, when Nathan was active duty Air Force and he would deploy, my um, the way I coped with it is I had a routine. So I became very much a planner, like here's what we're doing for the next whatever. And so it is a struggle for me personally because I don't know what's gonna happen and I, I don't like not knowing what will happen. But I will also say that this has forced me to be more appreciative of our lives right now and focus on, you know, we're, he's healthy, he's good, our kids are doing very well, um, you know, we are doing very well in our relationship. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's difficult. Um, it forces you to think things, look at things differently.